Hi friends, I'm really excited to announce a brand new version of Excalibur today, version 0.28.0. If you're new to Excalibur JS, it's a 2D TypeScript based game engine for the web to help you make your first game. We have a lot of cool new features and quality of life improvements, so let's just get into it. First up is arbitrary scene raycasting. Uh, in the past, you needed to be aware of all of the colliders you wanted to test and you had to loop through them, uh, but now it's easy peasy. You can just cast a ray into the scene and as you can see here as I sweep through, as the ray cast uh, intersects with the black rectangles, they light up as violet. Uh, and we can take a look at that code real quick. You can see I have a player here that I was moving around and some keyboard handling code here, but here's the interesting bit here. Uh, you can now go engine current scene physics.raycast and send an arbitrary ray into the scene. In this case, I have a player position and the direction that they're heading. Uh, I can optionally specify a maximum distance that I want the raycast to go. In this case, it was 100. Um, I can say optionally that I want to test against certain collision groups. And then optionally, I want to say, uh, do I want to continue searching for continued colliders or do I want to just return the first one that the ray hits? And in here, I loop through all of the uh, uh, hit uh, results, and we can go ahead and change the color of the graphics. Pretty cool stuff. Before, this was much harder to do. This is also super useful for like advanced platforming or anything like that, where you need to know where things are in relation to other actors. Very useful stuff. Next up is support for text wrapping in Excalibur, which was a community contribution from Ryan Grieb. So as you can see, I can uh, type in some text here. I can backspace and it'll wrap. The key thing here for uh, setting up text wrapping is if you set the maxed width prop property to a pixel value, it'll uh, provide a maximum width for the text to be and it will wrap on the next line. Next is a feature that's been asked about for a very long time. This is custom shaders on a per actor basis. So what you can do is uh, for a single actor, which is this kind of rectangle background here that I have, I can create a shader for this specific actor and do cool things like this little swirl animation we have here in the background. Very cool. Uh, this is done with a brand new material type. As you can see here in the code, uh, I can provide my own fragment source here. Uh, and create a new material right off of the graphics context for your game. Once you have that material, that can, material can then be set on an actor's uh, graphics material. So right here we can set that material and that'll be applied. Uh, you can also see us updating the specific uniforms for that shader to make the effect that you see here. Very cool. Next, related to materials are post-processor updates that add a number of built-in uniforms and a convenient lifecycle hook. So you can do things like this where you can get a neat little uh, CRT effect. So let's take a look at that code. You can see that the code was sourced here from Shader Toy, loosely modified. Um, Excalibur now provides some default uniforms like resolution, time in milliseconds, total time in milliseconds, and elapsed time for the current frame. You can now use these in any of your shaders uh, that are doing post-processing. And then you can also uh, conveniently hook into the new on update uh, method on your post-processor uh, and set uniforms here. In the plugin world, our Asprite pixel art plugin can now support the native binary format that is output by Asprite. And this really speeds up your asset development time. So refresh this and I can see that my animation now is updated. Recently, we added some new features to the tile plugin where you can specify custom properties on a tile here, and those properties will percolate back through here so that you can get at them in your game. You can now get at specific tiles by a point, uh, and then on that tile, you'll see the properties that are hanging off. So that sidewalk property that we saw before is now available to you. Very nice. Next is a super handy feature called input mapping, which can allow you to map multiple import sources to specific commands. So in this example here, you can see that I have multiple ways for the actor to move right. Um, and I can specify keyboard input, gamepad input, or pointer input 
uh, and those will execute my various different commands here. So what that looks like in action is here, I can use the arrow keys from my keyboard, I can use the gamepad, um, or I can use the pointer. So in this example, if I'm holding enter here on the keyboard and I use the pointer, I can go ahead and have the actor seek the pointer. Very cool. This can be super useful for accessibility. Uh, one can provide ways for users to map different import sources to your different game commands. It also kind of keeps your code clean. Uh, you can map all of your inputs uh, to actions in one spot. There are also a ton of quality of life things added to Excalibur, including a bunch of documentation updates to ExcaliburJS.com. The import sites on the ex.input.star namespace have been deprecated, uh, but don't fear, all of those import sites now live on the ex global, so you don't have to type so much to get at the input things that you care about. Animation events now emit a frame event that includes the frame index. So you can do logic when certain frames of your animation take place. You can now flip all the graphics on an actor without needing to duplicate and flip the graphics manually. Like you did uh, before, we had to go ahead and clone and flip that original animation. Now, instead, wherever you use those graphics, you can go ahead and grab the graphics component off of your actor and flip graphics horizontally or vertically wherever you need. For all the changes, please go and check out the change log. We have uh, in-depth change log notes for every new feature that we talked about today. And we also have a ton of bug fixes. So definitely upgrade when you can. I'd like to shout out a few community highlights, including this Vite template that Tempa MK2 made uh, that allows you to debug in VS Code. Very cool. Another cool thing from the discussion is a work in progress game called Toad Story, where you jump uh, to different platforms uh, to uh, uh, get a high score. I'm not very good at it. Another one I'd like to shout out is Excalibata, which is a small puzzle game prototype, which is a port of another game called Chibata's Revenge uh, by Drew Connolly. But uh, Chris uh, ported this to Excalibur uh, and posted the source code. So you can go and check this out as an example of how to make a you know grid-based puzzle game. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't take too long to complete. Um, it's kind of a, a good example of what you might do to make a puzzle game. So check it out. Huge shout out to Drew, who has been doing uh, some fun little games with Excalibur. Um, uh, he made a Mega Man clone with Excalibur, uh, a Zelda-like PvP game in Excalibur. Um, and uh, also did the GMTK Jam this year with Excalibur and all the code is hosted up on uh, these video links. So if you want to go check that out, I would highly recommend them as uh, a, an idiomatic way of building Excalibur games. Really a great job. And finally, I want to say a really big thanks to all our contributors. I am totally blown away by all of the people that responded to issues, created issues, created pull requests. Uh, participated in discussions. I needed two slides to have all of the people on. And if I missed you, I am really sorry. There's so many of you this time. I'm truly blown away. Big thanks to all of you. We couldn't make this happen without you. And then lastly, I want to say a big thanks to my supporters on uh, both GitHub sponsors and Patreon. And if you would like to sponsor us, uh, you can go to excaliburjs.com forward slash donate and check out the options there. Thank you again.